Welcome to the AP Physics 1 video lecture. This is going to be covering Unit 4, Energy. The section is Power. So power. Before we talk about that, let's talk about energy. Normally when we talk about energy, we talk about a force times a distance or the change in kinetic energy. So let's do a problem on that first. Here's the scenario. Genesis' parents got a new sofa and asked Genesis to move that sofa into the living room. Find the amount of work she did. So Genesis pushes the sofa with a 8 newton force parallel to the distance and moves it 12 meters. Or you could have a question that says the sofa was at rest until Genesis moved it. It is a 0.8 kilogram sofa and it traveled with a speed of 15.5 meters per second squared. So, what is the work that she did? A, you have a force and a distance. So you're going to use the work is equal to the force times distance equation, getting you 96 joules. But in the second one, you have a initial velocity, which is at zero. Then you have a mass and you have a final velocity. That is going to be work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That equals to one half mv squared minus zero. This is zero because the initial energy, the initial kinetic was zero because the object was at rest. Playing in, you get roughly around 90. Um, if you round it, it gets you 96 basically, okay? It's just because I try to get this number as close as possible. So the work here are identical at 96 joules. But, so we notice that Genesis did the same amount of work in both situations. But now her mom asked her, her mom recorded her and saw that Genesis took 120 seconds to move the sofa. Her dad, on the other hand, recorded her and saw that Genesis took 100 seconds to move the sofa. So how do you think time affects the work? Let me give you a equation. Power is the work divided by the time. So power is the amount of work divided by the time. Understand time has to be in seconds. So if we Take a look from her mom's point of view. We can say, what was Genesis power output in her mom's eyes? So we did the 96 divided by the 120, which gets you basically 0.8 W. W stands for watts. It is the unit for power. In her dad's eyes, we do the 96 divided by 100, getting us 0.96 watts. This question shows you that although the work is the same the power can be different depending on the time let's look at power a little bit more and we know that power has an association with time this is why we define power as the rate in which work is done or the rate in which energy is transfer the key word here is rate sometimes you see this as slope for calc people you could see this as a d by dt a derivative so the average power is work divided by time which is the work done and again the units is watts or you could say it is the energy transfer divided by time. Again, the units are still watts. The reason why I use the word average is because again, slope changes. So we have to take the average slope. You could do the instantaneous by taking the derivative, but that's for physics C. So the fact that you know the definition of power as work divided by time or energy transferring by time, what does it mean? Let me give you a conceptual understanding of what power is. Notice that here, the, the story of the turtles and hare. Both turtles, both the tortoise weighs, both the tortoise and the hare weighs the same amount. And they both can run at velocity equals to 
0.3 meters per second. So if they run at the same, um, if they run at the same velocity and have the same weight, their mass are also going to be the same. Okay, if they have the same weight, they have the same mass. All right, so both would do the same amount of work. Okay, at the same time, both will also release the same amount of energy. So in this case, both will do the same amount of work. Uh, but how are they different? Well, the tortoise will actually have a lower power output because he takes more time to release the energy. So let me repeat that. Lower power because of more time to release the energy. The hare, on the other hand, has a higher power output because he took less time to release the energy. So what is power in essentially? Power can be seen as the amount of time to release energy. If we say that an object has high power, like the hair, high power, we would say that the time taken is low. If the hair has low power, that means the time was high. This is leads us up to our key idea. Power and time has an inverse relationship. Let's take a look, right? P is equal to, right? Either work over time or P is equal to delta KE over time. Notice time is in the bottom, the denominator. This is why we say power and time has an inverse relationship. If power goes up, time goes down. If power goes down, time will go up. Let's take a look at the power now graphically. Here's the scenario. Fabiola is walking up a flight of stairs from rest. There should be a flight of stairs. There are a total of 100, um, a total of 12 steps to the second floor. Each step is 0 0.5 meters high. She decides to walk up two steps every one second. So how much energy did she gain? Well, you have to remember your potential energy equation. The only thing here is the gravitational potential. So U is equal to MGH. We know that the, the height that she's gonna go by is six meters. How did I get that? Well, you have a total here of 12 steps and each step is 0 0.5 meters high. So 12 times 0 0.5 gets us six meters that's how i get the six meters here six meters for the height and here this is the gravity but do we know fabiola's mass mm -mm. so we can just leave it right now as just 60 mass we don't know where did the energy come from is the system closed or open it's actually a trick question there's two ways to answer this one if you just think about the system as just Fabiola, you would say the system is actually open because the energy is gained from gravity, which comes from Earth, which is outside of Fabiola. However, if you say that the system is Fabiola and Earth, you would say the system is closed because the energy is transferred within the system from Fabiola to Earth, Earth to Fabiola. So see, graph this scenario. What should be the x-axis and what should be the y-axis? Well, the x-axis should be time and the y-axis should be actually potential energy here. How can you use the graph to determine Fabiola's power output? We know that it all depends on her mass. So I'm gonna give you three scenarios. 
This is her mass when it's at 35 kilograms. This is her mass, the green, if her mass is 40 kilograms. And this is her mass if it was at 45 kilograms. Notice her potential energy increases because depending on her mass. So what is the power output here? What is power? We know power is equal to the delta Ke over time. This Ke, you could also see it in some case as P equals to Ug minus Ug naught. Okay, the change in uh, potential energy as well over time. You can't use, you can't do the work over time because there's, you can't get work here. So the work one doesn't work. The PE delta K kinetic energy over time doesn't work, right? We only want to look at the potential energy. So what is her change in potential energy? Well, how can you get that from the graph? You could get that by looking at the slope. The slope of the energy versus time graph here will show you the power output. There you go. That will give you the power. And again, it depends. It's on an average, right? This is your delta uh, u g, right? Change in potential. And this is your delta t, right? And depending on how you pick it, you could get a better measurement of power output. Last thing about power is you could see power connect with projectile motion because projectile motion has a time value in it. Here's the scenario. A two kilogram ball is at rest from the top of the ramp. The ramp is 1.0 meters high and the ball is rolled down the ramp without slipping. At the bottom of the ramp, the ball makes a smooth transition to a small section of, of a horizontal table and then travels over the edge of a table that is 1.0 meters above the floor, eventually landing on the floor at a horizontal distance of 1.5 meters away from that table. Here's four questions. Please do them. Number one, when the ball is on top of the ramp, how much energy does it have? What type of energy does it have? Well, it's at a displacement. So it is gravitational potential energy. What is mass? Well, the mass is two kilograms. What is gravity? 10. But what is the height? It's actually two. This is the height. It's at 2.0 meters. How? Well, the total here is at two. So we would say that this system has 40 joules of energy. What is the velocity of the ball as it leaves the table? Okay. Now, give me a second. Let's look at the scenario. As it rolls down here, right, and it leaves the table like that with a velocity. Here, it actually has two types of energy. It still has kinetic. So this is the moving energy, which is the kinetic. And this is the potential. Why is there still potential? Well, because there is a height of the table. So there is still the height of the table that is left. So when it's leaving, the energy on top of ramp, the potential energy, which is from the top of the ramp, as it comes down, before it leaves, the system has both kinetic energy and potential energy. It's moving and there's a height above equilibrium. So you can plug in the values here. One ha uh, we know that the 40 joules comes from right here because that is how much energy it was at the top. When it comes to the middle, it breaks up into two parts. The moving, which is the kinetic energy, one half mass velocity squared. And this is MGH, right? Mass, um, G and H, because again, there's this height value here, right? Of one meter. All right. If you do this, you should get something like 20 equals to one half. M is two and V squared, two over two is basically, they cancel each other out. So you have 20 over V squared. 
basically it equals to 4.5 meters per second. That is the velocity at which it leaves. Now, how much time does it spend in the air? We need to know time. So here you can use the kinematics equation. Solve for time. We know that its final velocity is at zero because it hits the, uh, because it's, it goes to rest here. So that's V equals to zero. Final. So this is its final velocity right there. It's zero. And we know its initial is 4.5 because it goes here, right? If you solve for it, you get 0 0.5 and it's positive. The reason why I took it to be positive is because again, this just comes from a direction component. Okay, so just take the magnitude of it if it makes you feel better, right? 0 0.5 seconds. So what is the average power output from the time it was released from the time that it hits the ground? Um, no, for, what is the power output from the time? Well, no, no, it should be um, from the time it was released from the time it hits the ground. So the change in kinetic energy was just MGH, all right? So here you would say that the energy release was at 40 joules. We divide that by the time, which is 0 0.45. This will get you the power output of 8.88 8, 8 .88 something watts, right? You could round it to 89 watts. Here, this would be the power output, okay? Time would be how much it left. Hmm, that is an interesting question. This is actually wrong. Let me fix it. Give me a second. All right, so I actually had to change this. So before I was looking for the average power from the whole thing, you can't actually, because you don't know the amount of time it took the ball to come down. So the only time we can actually get the power output is in this scenario. So from the time it actually left the table to before it hit the ground. So this is the power that we're looking at. So power equals to W over T, or you could see it as the change of energy over T. So we're going to use this one, the change in energy over T. And we know that the change in energy here is just a change in the potential. So MGH minus zero. Okay. So here, give me a second. Yeah. So MGH is two times 10 times one. That is the height. And we divide that by the time. So the energy that it had from the top going down to the bottom is just 20, 0 0.4. Give me a second. All right, I went back and forth, but this is correct. Ah. So the power output that it actually had here, and again, we're talking about this point, right? Because this is the time. The amount of joules that it has here is still 40 joules, okay? It's still 40 joules because en energy was never lost nor transferred. So here it's still 40 joules. There you go. So the amount of 40 joules before it hits the ground, which is zero, would just be 40, which is the change in the height, basically. So yeah. So it's 40 divided by 0 0.5, and you get the answer of 89 watts. All right. I was going back and forth wondering if this value should be 20 or 40. Okay, but no, it's still the total, right? The total is still 40 joules. 20 of it was potential and the other 20 was um, kinetic and other stuff, right? But in here, you could just look at it in terms of final, minus, sorry, initial to final. The initial height was just empty, MGH, okay? And the final was just zero, right? You could just do zero minus MGH if you want, doesn't matter. You still have to get 40 divided by 0 0.5, okay? There you go, sorry about that. But the math here checks out, okay? There you go, that is how power works with projectile motions, right? Will you get a calculation like this? Not really, okay? But I just wanted to show you how they can interact, how the time value can come from, it comes from a kinematics equation, okay?